Hey guys, Renee from Tippy.com here, and today we are taking a look at iOS 4.1 on the iPhone 4. First, we're checking out Game Center. Now, uh, this isn't live yet, so it's kind of limited in what it can do. I set up an account back at WWDC on a developer unit, and uh, I've tested it out. I've got a few friends. It's very easy to accept friend uh, invitations. I will say that Apple's got this weird dun -dun 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 notification uh, sound that goes off when you get a new friend request, and it scared me. So uh, just be forewarned if you choose to leave notifications on. But it's very easy to accept friends at this point. Uh, you can't really do much else yet. There's no games listed, but we've seen Angry Birds. We've seen Dungeon Hunter 2 in the demo, so hopefully they'll come and you'll be able to hit a button here and start a game with a friend or get matched with someone um, who's not a friend but at the same skill level as you are. You can check out your friends. They have basic status. You can see what they're doing. Um, you know, you can unfriend them, report a problem if uh, there's any shenanigans going on. You can also change your status uh, to whatever you want it to be. Uh, eventually there'll be achievements and there'll be leaderboards and there'll be a bunch of Xbox Live uh, fun stuff, but for right now it's, like I said, fairly limited. It should go live uh, hopefully Wednesday, if not sooner though. I will say that I'm not hugely fond of the UI. It, there's more fonts here than there are in the rest of iOS put together. It looks Vegas, it looks pool table. Um, it's beautifully rendered for what it is, but I think Apple might have gone with something a little more modern gamesy. A couple of the other new features are hiding here inside the iTunes app. If you go to the videos tab and then to um, TV shows up at the top, you'll see what looks like the standard uh, TV show purchasing system that we've had before. Uh, and you see you can buy the season for $49 if you really want to or whatever. But if you double tap on um, one of the episodes, and double tapping is kind of unusual for iOS, but if you double tap on one of the episodes, you'll see you can still buy it for $2.99 if it's available. But you can also, uh, you can't really see that, oh, sorry. So you can also rent for $0.99. Cents. Um, it's only Fox right now. It's only ABC right now. Uh, probably because, you know, Disney owns ABC and Steve Jobs owns a huge chunk of Disney. But whatever, you click rent on an episode and um, it will put it into your download queue. Uh, now, it will download the standard definition version if you're on your iPhone. Uh, the HD version only gets downloaded if you're on one of those fancy new Apple TV things. Um, you don't really need an HD file. Even the iPhone 4 is 960 by uh, 640, so 720p with video is sort of wasted, and you don't need the file size, so I think this is more than fair. It'll download the SD version to your iPhone. Unlike when you buy an episode, however, it will not download the HD version later to iTunes. You um, get the SD version on your iPhone. That's it. That's all. Now, uh, one of the other new features is Ping, Apple's new musical social network. If you don't have an account already, all you get is that Ping screen until you've set one up in iTunes and then synced it and then waited. Uh, but if you do have it, an account set up, you'll get this screen, which shows the people who you're following, their recent activities, who they've started following, um, which albums they've liked, what they've commented on other people's albums they've liked. Uh, if you're a celebrity, a recording artist, you're like a, a higher level user and you can post videos and pictures and status and, and then we dull normals can comment on that. So you'll see all that sort of stuff um, in the activities tab right here. The next one over you have the people's tab and sorry, the people tab and that will show you a list of who you're following as well as who is following you. I haven't added a lot of people yet. Um, I'm just starting off with this but you'll see all those people here and you'll see the people who follow you as well. Uh, it gives a little bit of information there. You can pick three genres that you like. It's kind of auto-selected for you and it's limited to three, so that's it's not great, but um, it's a little bit. You can see featured people too, um, those recording artists I mentioned earlier, like 50 Cent, Coldplay, uh, Diddy, um, lots of other people, and uh, you can buy their tickets, buy their music, and that's that's really what this is set up for. So, for example, uh, Joshua Topolsky from Engadget, he liked this song, so I press one button and all of a sudden I can buy it. Um, so the, that's why it's in the iTunes app. So the last button here is uh, Profile. You click on that, you see um, the activity that you yourself have, um, I guess, engaged in on the social network, who you started following, what music you bought, what music you liked, your comments, um, etc., etc. You can also go down... Um, in my info tab and you'll see you know basically the music that you've bought recently your tagline whatever whoever it is you are where you are where you're located um, and that's it I mean it's not really Facebook it's not really Twitter 
it's not, it doesn't seem to me like it's user centric. It seems to me like, yeah, it's a little bit music centric, but it's, it's mainly iTunes uh, centric. So I'm not sold on it yet. But you know, Apple did get, um, was it a million users in the first 48 hours? So try it out for yourself and let us know what you think of uh, Ping. So next up we have, in addition to the camera app, it's HDR, High Dynamic Range Photography. So basically what this does is, you take a standard photo, sometimes you lose the whites that get blown out, sometimes you lose detail and shadow. So this takes uh, one exposure or two exposures higher, one exposure or two exposures lower, and from those three pictures, it kind of combines them together, does a tonal mapping, and gives you more range than most lenses can see, something closer to what the human eye can see, or at least that's my layman's understanding of the technology. It's very easy uh, to turn on and off. It works the same way as the flash or the camera. You just hit the button off, hit the button on. Here we have a couple examples I took. This is in a dark room looking at a bright window and you can see the building outside it looks kind of white and washed out. You don't really see any detail. Um, whereas if I flick on over to the uh, HDR version, you can see now that the, see the color of the building, you can see the texture of the brick. Um, it, it pulled all that, deal ba that detail back in, and it's not um, overblown anymore. And this one is a picture of a rainbow. It's only a single rainbow, not a double one, but you can still see the houses are kind of dark, and when I flip over, you see much more detail in the sh where the shadows used to be on the other pictures. So this is kind of the opposite case. It drew details out of an area that was uh, far too dark before. In my admittedly limited experience so far, it seems to do a better job pulling detail back into light areas than dark ones and maybe the dedicated HDR apps will do an even better job. But just for a regular person who takes photos without even thinking about it and they wonder why they, you know, the kid's face isn't showing up or the, this person's face is lost in shadow, this should do a really good job of just making regular photos look better to regular people and that's you know, probably why Apple put it in here. Um, Apple has also added high definition uploads to YouTube. The iPhone 4, the iPod Touch 4 can record in 720p, but for some reason iOS 4 didn't support that. iOS 4.1 does. So you take your high def video, uh, you're going to press the share button, and you're going to send all that straight up to YouTube. And yes, Apple has finally added AVRCP, the Audio Video Remote Control Protocol, uh, to iOS 4.1. So if you have stereo Bluetooth headsets, you can finally control the volume, you can skip forward, you can skip back. Unfortunately, the volume control doesn't get shown on the device, um, but it does work. Lastly, but most importantly to some, Apple has said they have fixed proximity sensor issues, Bluetooth issues, and performance on iPhone 3G issues in this iOS 4.1 update. So uh, we have tried this out on some of our different iPhone units. So far, it's working great for us. Let us know how it's working for you.